Hi there Jeep owners, today in your 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee L, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Kurt's four pole flat trailer connector vehicle wiring harness. And this is what our wiring looks like when it's installed. It is going to be completely hidden when you have the paneling installed on here, but we got to remove so that way you can see the wiring and the hitch and where it all, all kind of hangs out. This is going to be a four pole flat trailer connector, so it's going to be good for providing all of your necessary lighting signals to your trailer. This custom fit harness will install onto our vehicle and it just taps right in between our tail light assemblies. You simply just unplug those and it has custom fit inline connectors that will plug in between our light and our vehicle. So that way whenever a signal is passed to one of those lights from our vehicle and we hit our turn signal, our module that's on our harness here will detect that and it'll reproduce that signal and send it out our four pole. What's nice about the module reproducing the signal and sending it out the four pole is that it has its own dedicated power circuit that's run up to the front that connects to the battery. And if you have any faults on your trailer, since it has its own dedicated power circuit, the module would, if it was able to, it would shut the circuit down in time to prevent any damage from occurring. In the event it wasn't able to shut it down in time, it's no big deal because it has its own dedicated fuse, so the fuse would simply open for that dedicated power harness. But it wouldn't affect anything here on our vehicle. Once you repaired the issue on your trailer, you can replace the fuse and you're back up and running. The circuits that we get here on our four pole is going to be our left turn signal, right turn signal, tail lamps and brakes, which will keep us DOT compliant in all states. We'll begin our installation here at the back of the vehicle with our lift gate open. We're gonna remove both the passenger and driver side tail light assemblies. To remove those, we're gonna start by taking off the plastic trim piece here. There's a single pin here at the top. We're gonna use our plastic trim tool to get under the pin. And then if you have a forked one, you can slide that underneath afterwards and pop that up out of there. This panel here will just pull straight to the rear to remove. There's two clips down here. So we're just kind of releasing it and popping it out. There's the two clips. We'll then have a single fastener underneath that we'll remove with a T30 Torx. Once we've removed the fastener, the assembly here is going to pull rear and to the side, kind of almost a 45 degree. So we're just going to pop it out of there. We'll flip it over here. There's our connector. Press in on the release tab and separate the two pieces. At this point now, we can grab something that we'll use as a fish wire to feed down here. We're going to be using some airline tubing, but if you're doing this at home, something you probably have laying around is a metal coat hanger. You can undo that and feed that down there, and we're going to use that to pull our wiring back up. Our fish wire is right here. We're just going to push this down. You should be able to see daylight if you look straight down, so you sh shouldn't have any real issues feeding this down. Just kind of work it down in there. And then once you've got it down far enough, you should be able to see from up top. We'll then head down below and grab the other end. And sometimes you gotta twist it just a little bit to get it to line up to where you can reach it. And then after you reach up there and grab it, it'll sit out down below like that. And now we'll grab our new harness that we're installing, our custom fit one and we'll attach it to this so we can pull it back up. So here we have our new harness. We're gonna start here on the passenger side. We want the harness end that has the green and brown wires here. Those are gonna to attach to our fish wire. We're just gonna use some electrical tape here to make that connection. So just take your fish wire, take your connectors, and just tape it to it. And I recommend when you're taping this, the end here that's closest at the top make sure you tape all the way above it because what can happen is when you're going to pull it up something can grab it and then it's going to want to fold over and then it really is difficult to pull it up but if you keep it straight in a nice straight line like this it pulls up a lot easier and then we're going to put just a little bit here at the bottom just to keep that thing from uh, wanting to stray off as well we'll now use our fish wire to Pull them up. Sometimes you got to wiggle it back and forth just a little bit to feed it around the components. All right, there we go. We've got it pulled up. So we can go ahead and unattach it from our fish wire. 
We'll take our factory connector here. This will plug into the longer end of the new harness that we routed up. And then the other end here of our harness will plug right into our factory light. So we're just gonna grab this, make sure we've got that the right direction. Plug these two components together. And then we can reinstall our light assembly. Make sure you line up all the tabs. There's these little tabs here at the back. You got three of them. So all three of those do need to line up. There we go. Just some light taps on it. And we can go ahead and reinsert our fastener and snug that on down. So the next thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna head over to the other side. We've already got our assembly removed. We'll feed our fish wire down and then the yellow wire we're gonna route across. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it routed across and pulled up and then we'll show you the path we took to get it there. So here we are on the other side. We used the fish wire trick to pull this up. We're gonna head down below just in a minute and we'll show you the path that we took across to get the wiring over here. I did put a little cable tie on it right here attaching the wire to the factory wiring. That way this can't fall back down because our exhaust is right there and um, we don't want our wire to fall down on that exhaust and potentially melt to it. So after that, you can go ahead and reinsert this side. You do want to be careful not to crush your connector, so you can poke those down in the little hole to keep them out of your way. So we're now underneath the vehicle. We'll show you the route that we took to get it across in just a moment, because we're starting here at our module. So we might as well get the module mounted up at this point, because our green wire is pretty short. It's gonna leave the module basically hanging just above the exhaust here. So we're gonna take a rag and clean off the back side of the module, and then also where we intend on attaching the module. And I plan on attaching the module just right to the side of the hitch that's installed on here. So we're just cleaning off both sides. You'll get an adhesive pad in your kit. We're gonna use the adhesive pad to attach to our module, and then the other side of our pad we'll put on the surface that we just cleaned, which in our case is gonna be our hitch. Put your pad up in there. We're adhering that to the back of the module. Then peel off the backing. It's a little tight up in here. And then we're gonna take our module and stick it right into place there. Now once we've got it stuck on there, we are gonna use the cable ties that come in the kit. To further secure it, we're just gonna run a cable tie around it. That'll just help ensure that the module doesn't come off the sticky pad. There we go. And it's not uncommon that one cable tie here is not gonna be enough. Looks like this one might just be long enough, but if you need to, you can always attach two together. And we're just gonna make sure we are around our module. And then we'll just pull that cable tie closed there and then that'll just keep it secured attached to that uh, double-sided adhesive we put on there. So we'll come back to these two wires here in just a minute. This is your ground and your power. But we were talking about our white, so now that we got the module, or we were talking about the yellow going across. So once you get your module mounted up, we take the yellow wire and we push it over top of our hitch here. We also take our four pole wiring and we bring that with us because it needs to get towards the middle. So once we get over top of our hitch, we just stay along the bumper here, all the way across. For the yellow wire, we're gonna go all the way across to the other side and then use our fish wire to pull it up. For our four pole, we're gonna stop here in the middle and then we can just use some cable ties right here to secure it to either our bumper or to our hitch to uh, keep those out of the way. I think we're probably gonna end up attaching it to our bumper because uh, there's a spot like right here that we could probably fit a cable tie through to kind of clean it, make it clean and easy for it to, to make our secure uh, spot for our wiring. So for our ground wire, we're just gonna remove a fastener located up in here. You should be able to get up in there with your a small ratchet and a 10 millimeter socket. Once we get the fastener loose, we can take our wire, we're gonna slide the bolt, 
through the ring terminal like that. Make sure you get it slid all the way on there. And then we can reach up in there and reinstall it. So now we're going to do our power wire. You're going to have a big old harness of black wire here. This is going to route from the black wire here on our module all the way up to the front of the vehicle to where we can connect to our battery. So we're going to make our connection here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually feed this wire up over the hitch towards the black wire just because the black wire is so short. That way when we make our connection, when we pull the black wire, it'll pull the excess up over the hitch for us. So it'll be with the rest of our wires away from the exhaust. If you can feed the wire over, you can do that first. It's just, it's a real short wire, so it's kind of difficult. So it's probably easier to do it this way. Once you've got that pulled over, we'll take our strippers here, strip back our wire. This side should be pre-stripped. And you do get a butt connector in your kit. However, I recommend using a heat shrink butt connector. This is what it looks like here. This way we can shrink down the ends to seal it up to prevent any issues with moisture entering in our connector causing corrosion. A regular butt connector doesn't provide any of that protection. So within usually less than a year, you're probably having some issues that you're coming out to have to address, especially here underneath at the back or it's getting water flung all over it. After we slide the other side and the other end of our butt connector, we'll crimp it down and then we'll grab our heat gun to go ahead and shrink this. And we're just gonna use our heat gun to shrink this down. If you need a heat, heat gun, you can get one from Performance Tools here. I'm using the one that we sell right here on the website. All right, so now at this point, I'm gonna route it up to the front of the vehicle, up into the engine compartment where we're gonna to connect to our battery. I'm gonna go ahead and route it now and then I'll show you the path to get it there. One of the things that I did do before I started running this wire is I did take a fish wire and I already ran it down. So that way it's hanging down below. So once I get up to the front, I can tape it and be able to hop back up top and pull it straight up. So we went ahead and took our power wire here and I did kind of run it between this brace piece here because um, there's an opening in the middle that'll help keep it away from our exhaust. And then we stayed to the inside here next to our spare tire. And I did actually drill a couple of holes into this paneling here to keep it away, away from our exhaust. So you can see I drilled one hole here. Um, this was just to help keep our wire away from our spare tire so we can easily raise that up and down without the wire really being in the way. And then we did drill another one a little bit further back when it started to curve, and that's the one that's gonna pass our wire out and through towards the front. So it comes out just the other side there. Once we come out the other side of that, we go up above our suspension here, and we do cable it, tie it to the factory harness there. It then continues going forward above our suspension, and there's another factory harness right there that we cable tie it to. We then head towards the outside here, we stay up above everything, another cable tie there to the factory harness. Then we stay above this paneling and we just shoved it in there all the way up and you just can reach the other side here and grab it and pull your wiring through. That way it's all above that paneling. And then we went ahead and just pushed it above the subframe uh, piece here until it came across the other side. Then I pushed it behind this heat shield here. I just tucked it right in behind the heat shield until it come out the other side of the heat shield right up here, making sure to stay above that nut so that way our wire stays hidden behind the heat shield. That'll keep it uh, protected from that excess heat. And then here's the fish wire that we dropped down. We taped it to it, so now we'll just head up top and pull that back up. And so this is where I stuck the fish wire down. We tried to stay as far away from the engine as possible. You can kind of fit it in between this little bracket and uh, this hosing right there. We can then pull up the rest of our wire. Now, after you get it pulled up like this, it's a pretty good idea to just stick your head down below and make sure that it did all pull up. It's not uncommon for the wire to kind of twist into a little knot and then get caught on something and you think you're all the way up, but there's a jumble of wires down below and we don't want any of those dragging the ground. So once you double check yourself and make sure that those are good, um, we're just gonna probably run it right underneath the here over to where our connection point's gonna be right here at our fuse box. We're just gonna pull the whole lid off of there and we'll be attaching it to really any of those points is going to be an acceptable place to attach our wire. So first thing we're going to do is we're just going to trim off the excess wire. We're going to trim it off to about here. Now we're not going to connect directly to our battery uh, connection point or our positive. We're going to be connecting to a harness first that provides us with circuit protection. 
So I'm going to go ahead and give that a little cut there. Don't let go of the wire, though, because it might, might run away from you. So make sure you do kind of route it in a way. We'll probably put a cable tie around this just to ensure that that stays there. But before we connect it there, we're going to use this little fuse harness. This comes in your kit. So one side of this will connect to our positive post, and the other side's going to connect to our wire to send it off towards the back. So go ahead and strip back each side of your fuse harness. They do come pre-stripped. If you look there, you can kind of just peel it off. But they don't really strip a whole lot off of there, so I like to strip just a little bit more off than that. And we'll do the same thing to the other side. And then we'll also strip our wire that we routed. Now on one end of the wire that we routed, we're gonna use another heat shrink butt connector. We'll slide on there. We'll make our connection. On the other side, we'll take our fuse harness. If the ends want to kind of spray out, you can twist them to keep all the different strands together. And then we'll crimp this down. All right, now on the other side here, we're going to be placing a ring terminal so we can make our attachment there. This does come in your kit, so simply just slide that in there. And then you can crimp it down. And before we make our attachment here, we are going to go ahead and just shrink down that. It'll be a little bit easier with this being fully free. So now we're just going to go ahead and remove our nut there. We're going to use a 10 millimeter socket to do so. Once you zip that loose, take your nut off of there, grab your harness, slide your attachment on there, your ring terminal, and then thread your nut back into place. At this point now, we can take the fuse that comes in our kit and insert it into our fuse harness. Just slides in there. And now we can test things out. I think I am probably gonna put a quick cable tie on this wire because we don't want that to be able to fall down. Um, so I'll put a quick cable tie on there and then we're gonna run to the back and just verify that everything's working properly. So we've gone ahead and plugged our tester into the back. Our tester is gonna help us ensure that our vehicle side's working properly. You can use your trailer, but if you have any faults on your trailer when you plug this in, you might have a signal that doesn't work properly because of a short or open circuit or whatever the fault may be on your trailer. A small tester like this will ensure that the vehicle side is working properly so if when we do plug into our trailer something doesn't work, we know we need to make some repairs on the trailer side. So I've gone ahead and just turned the ignition to the run position here. We're going to go ahead and turn on the headlights and you'll see our taillight circuit illuminate back there. Go ahead and turn that off. Operate our left turn signal, we see that. Then our right turn signal. And then both of those lights should illuminate here when I press the brakes. With everything working properly there in the back, we can just clean up any loose wiring we've got with the included zip ties. And if you have any of the smaller trim panelings that you haven't reinstalled yet, you can go ahead and reinstall those. And you can also take the dust cap out of your kit that just simply slides over this. You do want to check the hole though that's in there. That needs to fold over and line up with the exposed pin. So there is a specific side it wants to be installed on. If you install it on the wrong side, you can't just like flip it around though. It is pretty easy. So this will just flip over here like that. And then we can use this dust connector here, our dust cap, to secure our wiring to our hitch when we're not using it. And that completes our installation of Kurt's four pole flat trailer connector vehicle wiring harness on our 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee L.